I recently took a trip across the border to visit my good friends Alex and Nick down in Nebraska. They've been working on a number of different nature projects and I was able to join them for a few days to film Bees and Bison. Today, we're headed to Bountiful Blossoms Bee Company in Glenwood, Iowa to get up close with some of their hives and to show you all the work that goes into a day of filming honeybees. We're on our way right now to visit Dr. Carol Fassbinder Orth. And so she is a professor that I've been working with recently who's a virologist, but she also happens to be a beekeeper or an apiculturist. We've been working on a project for the past year or so so now we're going to actually start filming a lot of it and it's going to be all about bee declines and insect declines so because she's a beekeeper we have access to a lot of her hives to film some very cool behaviors and some new science that she's working on so we have all this gear back here which is just a ridiculous amount of gear all to film bees so it'll be really interesting to see what we get the many hive boxes scattered around the property belong to a very popular insect the honeybee the presence of honeybees in North America is a bit of a controversy as there are non-native species imported from Europe which can compete and in some cases outcompete native bee populations. Before we started filming, Carol shed some light on her research and why the use of honeybees is important. No, honeybees are not native to North America, but they're a really good indicator species because it's so much harder to go and find bumblebees in the ground and to be able to track what's happening to them. They're really important, but they're so much harder. And so we have to start somewhere that's a little easier. I'm interested for my research in looking at aging and social collapse. What we're looking at is really trying to get views in the hive that people haven't seen. Just natural beauty, number one, but also being able to show them, okay, this was a healthy hive now, and then following it and seeing it decline later, because we haven't seen footage like that. It took us about 45 minutes to set up all the gear. Everything went smoothly, although Nick did go 12 rounds with a softbox. A story of courage and bravery that will be in theaters this fall. Today we're coming out here to film some bees and so we have a custom bee rack that we can actually fit in a lot of the frames that go into the individual hives so we can layer them up however we want to and we can use things like sliders and all of that on one solid surface. And the kit that we're using today is specialized for a lot of macro work. We've got this Laua probe lens right here, it's the 24 millimeter probe. And we're gonna be using that so we can get a two to one magnification right up on the bees. So hopefully we can get a little bit of behavior coming from them and behavioral interactions between different bees. And we illuminate the whole thing with these two big 150 watt LED lights so it doesn't produce a lot of heat and melt a lot of the wax. And I'm monitoring all of this through my Sony FX6 with the Ninja V, so that way I can monitor it slightly larger. I can use focus peaking and things like that because this is all manual throw focus, so I'm gonna to have to manual focus the entire time. While we're filming all of this, we have Carol, who's really the bee specialist, so I don't know anything about bee behavior. So she's gonna be looking through this client monitor to where if I move the camera around, it wirelessly transmits all of that visual so that way she can be looking at what the bees are doing and we don't have to be all over each other's shoulders. With everything set up and ready to go, the only thing that was missing was the star of the show, the honeybees. All right, so we have a lot of technology hooked up to these hives. And there's quite a few things to see here. So these are bee counters. It counts every single bee that goes in and every bee that comes out, solar powered here, and then it connects to the phone. We also have a lot of contact microphones. All of those are hooked up that go back inside to be able to listen to their sound. So I'm going to light the smoker, just 
have hemp rope inside here that burns pretty well. So we just gotta get the fire going. The purpose of this is to mask their alarm pheromones. So bee alarm pheromones smell like bananas. And so if you start smelling bananas, then you probably should stop doing whatever you're doing and, and try to do something else. All right, so I'm just gonna smoke the entrance just a little. We could start with this, and if we don't like it, yeah, that works. There's plenty of then uh, there's plenty of workers on there. We've got can. drones. We've got workers. They're in. Their little heads are inside of cells. They're moving around. Another trick that we have up our sleeve for this shoot is that we designed these things that I'm calling a studio hive. And I'm sure other people have done it before, but we're using it very specifically for the purpose of replicating the inside of what an actual hive box looks like. Well, I wanted to have access to be able to film a lot of unique behaviors inside of the hive box and maybe make the bees a little bit more comfortable, but also have access for lights and for things like inserting the probe lens and other lenses and sliders. that's in the center, uh, as Alex is shooting this shot, you can see the tree on the back side. So it's a three quarter inch hole, which is exactly the size that is drilled in normal boxes so that it mimics what a normal hive would look like. With the help of Carol's expertise, we were able to capture a number of different behaviors while filming these hives, like antennae to antennae communication, trophallaxis, which is the exchange of foods or fluid from one bee to another, and it's one of the main ways that information is passed through the hive. We also filmed bees with their heads buried deep in cells, which they do for a number of reasons, such as feeding larvae, resting, processing nectar, cleaning cells, feeding on honey, among other things. Being able to see the bees up close like this made us appreciate all the fine details that much more. I'd like to give a big thank you to Carol for letting us film the behind the scenes video and sharing her knowledge with us, as well as Alex and Nick for filming and letting me join them on the shoot. And before I go, I'd also like to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives. Their classes cover a ton of topics ranging from photography, videography, editing, lifestyle, freelancing, and much more. I recommend a class called Outdoor Photography, Shooting at Sunset, Sunrise, and Night by Chris Burkhart. Photography during these times of the day can be tricky, and I find this class is a great introduction with useful tips while both in the field and while post-processing. Classes just like this are divided into easy to follow lessons with no ads, so you can really just focus on learning. There's a nice flow to the videos, and I like the fact that I can go at my own pace, especially with a busy schedule. And right now, we're giving away free one month trials of Skillshare Premium memberships to the first thousand of my subscribers that join using the link below. So check it out, there's a bunch of amazing learning opportunities, and thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I'll see you in the next one. Happy birding.